If you ever need to create a list of dates in Excel, there's a quick and easy way to do it without manually typing each one. Whether it's consecutive dates, only weekends or custom intervals, I'll show you the fastest methods, both manual and formula based. Let's dive in. The fastest way to create a list of dates is with Excel's fill handle. Start with a date in a single cell, hover your mouse over the bottom right corner until the cursor changes to the black cross and then drag down to fill the column with sequential dates. Notice it gives me a tooltip telling me what date it's up to so I know when to release. It then fills the dates for me. You can also drag the fill handle across to get a row of dates in your column headers. I'm going to leave them as is for now. By the way, I should point out that my dates are formatted day, month, year. Now, if your dates are in a column adjacent to data, you can use the autofill by double clicking the fill handle and it copies it down to the end of the data or the first gap in your data. Now, you might be wondering how this heading just appeared on its own. I've got some conditional formatting in this header row to only reveal them when I put data in the cell below them. If you find that Excel just copies the same date instead of increasing them, your column might be formatted as text instead of a date. To fix it, select the data on the Home tab in the Number Formatting. Make sure you have Short Date or Long Date formatting applied. If dragging doesn't work at all, then the fill handle might be disabled. To turn it on, go to the File tab, down in the bottom left, Options, and then on the Advanced tab, in the editing options, make sure enable fill handle and cell drag and drop is checked. Now let's say instead of incrementing the dates, you want each row to have the same date. So again, we'll start with one date and then get the fill handle icon in the bottom right. Hold down control. Notice I now have a plus above the plus fill handle. Left click and drag and I get the same date repeated. So effectively I'm copying the first date down as many rows as I need. Now, what if you only want specific dates like weekdays or only the first of every month? Start by typing in the first date and then left click and drag the fill handle as many rows as you need. Once you release it, we get this icon in the bottom right. Click on that to expose the autofill options. And here you can choose to fill weekdays, which skips weekends and only fills Monday to Friday. Or we can fill months, which keeps the same day of each month. Or we can fill years keeping the same day and month, but counting up in years. Let's select weekdays, and now it's got rid of dates for Saturday and Sunday. Another way you can enable this menu is by inserting your date and then right-clicking the filled handle and drag. When you release, it automatically exposes the options without you having to click another button. So here I want months, and there we have our list. So that's how you quickly generate date lists manually. But what if you need a pattern like every Monday, or every second Friday, or a custom sequence. Let's say you need a list of Mondays, maybe for a reporting schedule or project deadlines. I'll type the first Monday in the cell, and then on the next row down, we'll type the next Monday. Select both Mondays, and now we have a pattern for Excel to follow, and I can use my fill handle to drag it down as far as I need. And now I have a list of Monday dates one week apart. And this works for any interval. For example, fortnights are easy. So we can start with the 6th and then the 20th and then select both cells. Left click and drag. And now I have a list of fortnightly Mondays. Now what if your schedule isn't as simple as just every Monday? Maybe you need every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, like a class schedule or work shifts. So I'm going to type in the list of dates. We're going to start with the 6th. And then we want the 8th, 10th, 13th, 15th, and 17th. Now I have a pattern that Excel can follow. It can see that I want every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Left click and drag as far as I need. And now I get my pattern repeated. Now dragging the fill handle works great. But what if you want your list of dates to update automatically without dragging at all? Maybe you're working with a dynamic data set or you just don't want to manually adjust dates every time. That's where formulas come in. Sometimes you need your dates to automatically update based on a starting date. For example, our starting date will be 1st of January. And then in the next cell, I'm just going to add one day to that date. Left click and drag to copy it down. And now if I change the first date, let's make it the 1st of February, all of my dates automatically update. We can do the same to calculate fortnightly dates. 
For example, here I want to add 14 days and then copy it down and I get my fortnightly dates. And of course, this works for any number of day increments. Need a list for the last day of each month? Instead of entering them manually, you can use the end of month function, EO month. For the start date argument, I'll use the date function and I want a list of dates for 2025. I want it for 12 months, so I'm going to use the sequence function to return a list of numbers 1 through 12. That's for the 12 months. And I want the date to be the first of each month. Close my date function. And then in the months argument, I simply tell it how many months I want EO month to increment. Now, I just want it to return the last day of each of the 12 months. So I'm going to enter zero here because I don't want it to increment them at all. Close parentheses on EO month, press enter, and it spills the list of end of month dates for 12 months of the year 2025. Now, if you have Excel 2019 or earlier, you won't have the sequence function or dynamic arrays, so this won't work for you, I'm afraid. Here's another trick. If you want two years of dates, simply change the sequence from 12 to 24. And there we have two years worth of end of month dates. Now you might wonder why this formula doesn't just repeat the months for 2025. The key is the month argument in the date function, which is being fed the values 1 to 24. Excel allows the month argument in date to go beyond 12 and it automatically rolls over to the correct month and year. So date 2025, month one, day one returns the 1st of Jan 2025. Date 2025, month 12, day one returns December 1st, 2025. And then date 2025, month 13, day one returns Jan 1st, 2026. And so on the pattern goes. And this is why we get 24 unique months progressing from January 2025 through to December 2026. Kalebaha. If you want to learn more hidden tricks and tips like this that elevate your Excel skills to ninja level so you can boost productivity, enhance your data analysis and increase career opportunities, check out my Excel expert course. It comes with a certificate of completion and support and mentoring from me personally. There's a link in the video description and pinned comment. Okay, what if you want the first of each month? Well, we can simply use the date function with the year 2025 and then let's use sequence to get 24 months and we want the first of each month so that's day one press enter and there's the first of each month for two years and of course if you want a different day let's say you want the 15th of each month simply change the argument in the date function but what if you only need weekdays no weekends that's where the workday international function comes in handy again i'm going to use the date function to enter the date Alternatively, you could enter it as text or you could reference a cell or put another formula in here. The year I want is 2024, the month is 12 and the day is 31. Close parentheses on my date function. And then I want a sequence of 21 days added to the end of 2024. So we're going to use sequence with 21. It's going to give me the numbers one through 21. Next, I can specify what day my weekends fall on. Now here the default is one for Saturday and Sunday, so I can skip this argument. Let's enter it just for this example. Next, you can also have it skip holiday dates. For example, we have two public holidays in January. So let's reference those cells. Close my workday international formula, press enter. And now I have a list of 21 workday dates starting between one and 21 days after the end of December, 2024, that also skip weekends and holidays. A little known trick with the Workday International function is you can specify your own sequence of workdays. For example, let's say you have a three day weekend and only work Tuesday to Friday. That would be a dream. Again, I'll use date for the start date, 2025, January 1st. And I want a sequence of 31 days starting after the 1st of January. And then in the weekend argument, I can enter a series of seven digits made up of ones and zeros wrapped in double quotes. The ones represent my days off and the zeros are my work days. The first digit is Monday and the last is Sunday. So I have Monday off, that's one. Then I work the next four days, which are my four zeros. And then I have Saturday and Sunday off, which are the ones. I can also specify holidays here, but I'm going to just leave it at that. Press enter. 
And now I have a list of work days that follow my pattern of working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and so on for 31 days. Another common requirement is a list of the first Monday or first Wednesday, etc. in each month. I'll demonstrate this formula broken down into steps and then we'll bring it together. We're going to start with the date function. We want 2025. We want a sequence of 12 months. And I want a list of dates for the 7th of each month. Why the 7th? Because the first Monday in any month is guaranteed to occur on or before the 7th. We're going to subtract just the right number of days from the 7th to land on the first Monday. The next step is to get the last day of the previous month. So we're going to use date, 2025, sequence, 12 months. And I want the first, minus one. The minus one is going to give me the last day of the previous month. And then with the weekday function, we're going to reference that last day, comma, and we want to find out the day of the week as a number from zero for Monday to six for Sunday for that last day of the previous month. So I want option three. Close parentheses on weekday. Let's copy it down. And now all I need to do is take my starting date minus the number of days returned by weekday to get my Monday dates. So let's bring it all together. I'm going to open the clipboard and we're going to just copy the different formulas to the clipboard. This one I only want up to the equal sign and in weekday also up to the equal sign. Okay, so now I've copied them to my clipboard. Let's go here and we're going to, in the formula bar, paste in the first formula. Then we're subtracting the weekday function and then instead of referencing this cell here, we're going to insert the formula. And there's my list of the first Mondays in each month for 2025. Now, if you want to return the first Tuesday instead of the first Monday and so on, simply change this minus one here to minus two for Tuesdays, minus three for Wednesdays and so on. So now you've got quick ways to generate date lists in Excel, whether it's a simple fill, a pattern or a formula that updates automatically. But dates are just one part of keeping your spreadsheet running smoothly. If you want to take things even further and make your entire spreadsheet update itself, check out this video next. I'll show you five Excel tricks to automate your work so you never have to manually refresh anything again. I'll see you there.